All right, we're going to talk about manual motor starters. And manual, manual motor starters are characterized by the fact that the operator must go to the location of the starter to start it. In other words, it's totally manual, nothing automatic about it. You walk over and turn it on or turn it off. So it's like a light switch. And some of them are so small that they will fit in a light switch box. And this picture is one that fits in a, in a light switch box. What is the difference between this manual motor starter and a light switch, a really heavy duty light switch? What's the difference? Overload. It's got a built-in motor overload. Okay, so it's got overload temperature protection built in, and usually it's specific to the motor that it came with. A lot of times, a package air conditioner will have will come with a manual motor starter, and you can operate it from a light switch type device. This is what this is right here. Uh, it's a package air conditioning manual motor starter, and the, like I said, the only difference between that and a regular light, a very heavy duty light switch, is that it has overload protection built into it. Um, if you look at page 28 in your IMC, you'll find that there are two drawings, schematic drawings for a two-pole manual motor starter. And you notice that one of them has one power contact and one has two. They're both single phase, but you know that single phase can be 110 volts only, or it can be 120 volts phase A and 120 volts phase B, or what we call single phase 240 volt, which is two hot circuits. So the second drawing, figure 3-3, is a single line diagram or a ladder diagram of a manual motor starter for a 230 volt manual motor starter. For quiz purposes, you must be able to draw either one of those drawings from memory. Please commit those two drawings to memory. Okay. Now, the little handle switch is not the only kind of manual motor starter. There are lots of other kinds, and this little starter right here is another kind where it's still push button, sort of. I mean, it's push button instead of a little handle switch, but it does the same thing. It's got a start and a stop. And again, it's not magnetic. It's not magnetic. It does not have a coil that holds it in once you've hit start. It's mechanically held. It's held by a latch. This type is held by a latch. You push in start, and it connects a latch that holds it in physically. It is spring-loaded open. And when you, when you hit stop, all it does is release the latch and opens up. Now, you know that this has an overload heater in it, right? So when the overload heater overloads, what does it physically do? It releases the latch and lets the springs push the switch back open. Because this is a three-phase switch, right? Unlike our single-pole little light switch-looking thing that we looked at before, this has three hot lines, line one, line two, line three. And it's connecting all three of them when you hit start. And when the overload kicks it out or you push stop, it releases the latch and lets it go open. Now I want you to look at the overload drawing that, I don't think it's even in the right chapter. I think it's farther along the way in overloads on page 37. And I want to talk about the difference between a magnetic overload and a mechanical motor starter. Look at the big drawing at the lower half of page 37 and you'll see a magnetic thermal 
overload. It's not magnetic, but it's operating a magnetic coil. See the normally, normally closed contact at the bottom? It's spring-loaded to move up and down when the little wheel turns and allows it to go up. It opens a circuit and releases the magnetic coil. That's for the magnetic coil. The overloads in a manual motor starter are identical to this, except instead of having electrical contacts down at the bottom, it's still got that little bar, and it probably has a little contacts sitting there, but the little arm has another bar going up, and all it does is hit the release latch of the locking latch of a manual motor starter. So the two are very, very similar, except that the way they operate is slightly different. The magnetic type opens a circuit, and the manual type pushes the latch open and lets the springs take over and open the circuit of all three power circuits. Okay, hang on one sec. I want to talk about a manual motor starter that has a low voltage release. That means when the power drops out that it opens the circuit. Generally speaking, a manual motor starter, once you start it, if the power goes out, the motor will stop, but when the power comes back on, it'll resume running, right? And that's called not have that's we call that not having low voltage release. So it doesn't have a manual motor starter generally doesn't have low voltage release. But it can be configured so that it does. And to do that, you need to add a solenoid so when the power drops out, it opens the switch. Okay? So there is a specialized manual motor starter that will open up and give you low voltage release. But generally speaking, manual motor starters do not have low voltage release. In other words, if the power goes out, the motor will stop. When the power comes back on, it will restart without any instructions from you. It'll just restart because the power is again. Power is there again. Let's talk about overload relays. We've talked about across the line starters. See if I can find that again. No, I don't see it. There it is. And here we see a regular three phase motor starter. This is a magnetic motor starter. And Manual motor starters, generally speaking, will have a couple of things in common. They will all have a coil, which is what pulls the thing in, uh, closes the circuits, the power circuits. And they'll have holding contacts. And the holding contacts keep the circuit closed, as we've discussed holding contacts before. So one of the things that a, manual, that a magnetic motor starter has that a relay does not is a holding contact. The other thing it has is this whole block down here is what? What is that block down there? This whole block down here. That is the motor overload relay. You notice it got, it's got three different phases of the power circuit going through it. And it's got three heat sensing devices but they only open up one overload normally closed contact. Okay, any one of the three can overload and open the contact, and that will release the current that goes through the coil, the control circuit. And so therefore the control circuit will lose power and the magnetic circuit going to the coil will open. There will not be any more magnetism and the coil will drop out the plunger, and the motor will stop. Okay. Now, having started talking about overloads, 
Once again, we want to go back to page 37 in that lower left, lower bottom half of the page is what's called a solder pot overload. And the ones you're looking at in this diagram right here are solder pot overloads. And they can be reset once they cool off. They have to cool off before you can reset them. Okay. There are bimetallic strips that will work the same way, more or less. And again, they can be physically relo reloaded so that you can reset them. Take a look at page 42 of the textbook, figure 4-15, and it shows you a ladder diagram of a three-phase motor and the control circuit, and it's indicating three overload contacts. Some of the old motor starters actually had three overload contacts, but when a series circuit is broken in any place, one open, all open, right? So there are old ones that had, that have, and you will run into them once in a while, that physically have three different contacts. So you have to kind of watch for the way it's wired and realize that they've all got to be connected because the three overloads are independent and connected to a single contact. Okay, the picture on the right is the single contact, which is more common to modern across-the-line starters, for figure 4-17. Take a look at that. And there are overloads that operate from a current transformer. And if you look at page 44 at the top, you'll see where they're using a current transformer to reduce the current to a sensible device. And so that current going through that circuit will generally be a proportion, not the full load current. Okay, not the current being... Uh, not the current going through the large wire. A dash pot overload is one that allows for a large current to inrush. So it's actually a time delay on a start circuit. We have dash pot overloads in the, in the uh, lab. Make sure you take a look at those. And a dash pot uses, instead of air like a pneumatic time delay, a dash pot uses hydraulic oil to create the, the uh, time delay. So it's basically just a time delay device, but it's generally used for starting circuits to allow for the inrush current to happen. Okay. So one of the things you need to know about a dash pot is a little more difficult to adjust the time delay, and it has a very limited amount of time delay that it's going to allow. And the thing that's going to change it is the size of the orifice holes or uh, the port that it goes in and out of, something like that. So it's similar to a pneumatic time delay relay, but it's not the same at all. All right, let's wind this up for today. And we'll call this a recording.